So the other day in class, I was teaching a group of acupuncturists some massage techniques, and in specific, I was talking about the superficial front line as discussed and presented by Thomas Myers in his book Anatomy Trains. So the superficial front line is going to be a line that starts on the top of the foot, goes up the tibialis anterior, and then around the knee, through the quads, and it kind of makes a pit stop for what we call a derailment at the ASIS, and then again it's picked up at the pubic symphysis, going up rectus abdominis, and then through the chest and up the SCM, and importantly it also goes through the SCM and around the back of the head. So this is the superficial front line again, as presented by Thomas Myers in his book Anatomy Trains. It is an amazing book and he puts on a fantastic course, so something I'd strongly recommend is uh, anything through Thomas Myers and Anatomy Trains. At any rate, I was teaching this to these acupuncture students and the question came up, well, what's the biggest difference then between the superficial front line and what they know to be the stomach channel, or the stomach meridian in Chinese medicine? So we see this is the stomach channel in uh, traditional Chinese medicine. And it looks shockingly similar. Uh, in TCM, we actually go in the opposite direction. So it's going to start at the head and face, go down the SCM, uh, and then it will go through the chest, through the abdomen, down the quads, around the knee, through the tibia, center, to top of the foot. You see, it's a very, very similar pathway. Yeah, certainly there's some differences, but it's close enough that, uh, that I, I like to consider it to be the same thing. Now I'm just going to scroll down here a little bit because there's another channel I think is fascinating. Uh, so this is what we call the sinew channel, and it's basically going through the exact same pathway, right? Now there's a little bit of a divergent part here that goes around the low back, but with the exception of that, again, down the SCM, the chest, the abdomen, quads, basically following the precise same pathway. So you can see that there is this really cool overlap between the anatomy trains or the superficial front line and the stomach channel. Now, this isn't the only overlap between the anatomy trains and, and uh, the meridians within Chinese medicine. In fact, pretty much all of the myofascial lines have a correlate within traditional Chinese medicine, either one of the uh, 12 primary meridians or one of what we would call the eight extraordinary meridians. No matter which way you look at it though, the overlap is amazing. So then the question is really, what is the biggest difference? Well, in my opinion, not much. Uh, now, when we talk about what a meridian is within the scope of traditional Chinese medicine, it's a pathway through which qi or energy travels that's directly and indirectly related to the internal organ of which it's associated. Now, that was some verbal soup, right? What does that actually mean? Well, we get into the theory of traditional Chinese medicine and every single acupoint on the body is connected to a meridian and all of those meridians are connected to an organ and an organ system. So when we manipulate a specific point within traditional Chinese medicine, we're affecting that point and we're affecting the organ system that's related to it. And this is how we treat the body as a whole. Now within myofascial lines and Thomas Meyer's idea, a myofascial line or anatomy train is a consistent continuous band of fascia or connective tissue, which is a tensegrity based system, which distributes force through the entire body. Now, those definitions are very similar when we first look at it, but I think maybe if we dig a little bit deeper, they're almost identical. The first part of the definition of a meridian in Chinese medicine, it's a pathway in which qi or energy travels. The last part of the definition I described of an anatomy train or a myofascial line is a pathway in which energy moves, right? We're talking about kinetic and mechanical energy within myofascial lines, and we're talking about more of the energetic energy within traditional Chinese medicine, but ultimately energy moves through these predictable pathways. So I really don't differentiate and see that much of a difference. In fact, through my experience, uh, being primarily schooled as an acupuncturist and doctor of acupuncture, the overlap and the importance of understanding both of these systems has a huge clinical relevance. So as an acupuncturist, learning about the myofascial lines it dramatically increased my ability to understand how energy moves through these lines. In this case, physical energy, but there's really not much of a difference between the physical energy and the energetic energy. And the opposite is true for massage therapists. Having taught a lot of massage therapists acupressure, it really brings to light the idea that we really need to treat the body as a whole, right? What is really cool about using acupressure, and in fact, it's the same thing with meridians, or sorry, within uh, myofascial lines, 
is one part is connected to every other part. In fact, so much so that a woman named Ida Rolf, who came up with Rolfing, you may have heard of it, she used to say where it is, it ain't. Meaning where the problem manifests usually is not where the problem really is. So as a massage therapist learning about acupoints and acupressure and meridians, it really brings to light that the body is a whole and we treat the body as a whole. So as usual, a long answer for a short question, but to summarize, the biggest difference between myofascial meridians and acupuncture meridians is almost nothing, with one exception. Using acupuncture meridians, our intention is a little bit different. With acupuncture meridians, the intention is to create an effect locally, systemically, and within an organ system. Within myofascial meridians or myofascial lines, we remove that organ system part of the equation, and other than that, they're the same. We are still treating locally and the body as a whole, we just don't have that intention or this idea to treat any internal conditions, right? So that's the biggest difference between these two. So if you're interested in learning anything more about fascia or acupressure, check the links below. We've got a free fascia course. It's called a field guide to fascia. Check it out. We go into all things fascia from what fascia is and why it matters to functions and dysfunctions to how to keep your fascia healthy for both yourself and your clients. We've got a couple courses for uh, myofascial cupping and acupressure as well. All of that will be in the description. Uh, but with that, I'll see you next time.